My name is Frank Bennett. Dr. Yalamonte, Station 1661. Dr. Yalamonte, Station 1661. And I'm not the doctor, but I am an attorney inside the city of Philadelphia. I'm a Northwood resident right over on Castor Avenue by Pat's Cafe, a big house on the corner. I'm also the vice president of Northwood Civic. You have the civic support here tonight with Joe Krause, the president, Joe. Um, we've actually talked about this, and we're trying to help coordinate with uh, Frankfurt Civic, and I just want to bring it back a little bit as how we got to this point so far right now. Back in 1957, these mansions that are around here have been cut up into little tiny apartments. Yeah. And so when I got my hands and anybody can get a hold of this stuff, it's on the city's website, L&I. Back in 1957, it was converted from an 8 unit to an 11 unit. Well, we're talking about 36, how do we get there to that number? If they're only licensed for 11 units, you times it by three. And that's the reality of it. You can put three people inside of one unit. Now, 1957, that's the last thing that's on there as far as the zoning goes, but we do have an application back in 2007 for demolition of that property. They were gonna demolish and put up row homes right along there, a beautiful plan. Never, never went through and the application just lapsed as of Monday, so that's not going to happen anymore. So what do we actually have here? We have a private individual who's purchased a piece of real estate who wants to develop it according to the zoning that they have been granted back in 1957. You got 11 units in there, you can put at least 36 people in there. It's 13 units, sir. It's 13, yeah. all right, well, then he times it out a little bit yeah. more then. Yeah, so, but, but you're going to put four, beer, four beds in each unit. And I, I can actually tell you that the last zoning that we have is 11. He wants to do the extra two. It's 13 two. because I used to, I, I, it's, I've been in there before. It's he just, wants to do that. I get where you're saying this stuff is actual versus what's on the books. I'm talking to you guys about what's legal, what's okay. on the books. 11 on the books times three, 36. Yeah. What do we do? 2007, the last thing activity is that we're going to demolish the property. Here's what they haven't done. You got a property over there that's been being rehabbed. In fact, you got a truck parked out front of there right now, don't you? Yeah. One of those yeah. high risers yeah. lifting stuff in and out. Yeah. Have they applied for permits? The answer is no. Wow. Everything they've done in that property has been illegal. Wow. Nothing has been done properly. No permits been issued. Wow. And you don't. E we don't even know if they have the proper facilities for 11 units. Now, you can go to zoning and you can ask them to convert to 11. And if, as long as you have a plan and they'll approve you, but you still have to effectuate or put into place 11 units. Have they done that? Here's some questions that you guys need to be asking. Have they actually put in the facilities for that many people? Are there cooking facilities that can accommodate? Are there basic toiletries? I'm talking about a toilet. Just something for people to go to the bathroom. Now, we see stuff going in there, no permits, no plumbing, no nothing has been issued. So what I'd like to ask the question, and what should be on everybody's mind is, how did they get all this work done, and how are they continuing to work today without asking for a permit? And I guess the more important question is, why hasn't the city, through our elected officials, who are chairs of those committees, actually put a stop to it? It takes one telephone call to the local inspector to say, there's work going on over there, and they don't got a permit. A cease work, stop, cease and desist will go up on that door and no work will continue. Why has that not been done? Yeah, yeah. yeah why? Well, yeah. 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 And uh, the response. All we got is like, well, actually, thank you. My name is Dan Dunphy and I'm here on behalf of Jason Dawkins and Councilwoman Maria Sanchez. I think Frank did a pretty good job at summarizing where the property is in terms of its zoning. I did also check this morning that the property did also have a valid housing license for 11 units. There are three open service requests with license inspections. Our office has initiated, I think, at least two of them uh, for maintenance, electrical. I don't think they can hear you in the back. For uh, the maintenance of the property, electrical, and construction being done at the property. Previous reports to the property for zoning, for licensing, were disregarded by licenses and inspections because they received calls saying there are 11 units in this property. We think it's being run as more than units that we should be. The licenses and inspections check. They pull the zoning permit. They do not go out and inspect the zoning complaint. So we had to file new complaints under maintenance, electrical, and construction because that's what has been reported to our office and to licenses and inspections as well. And I do not believe that the councilwoman has a phone number to call to send an inspector out, but if she does, I will try to find it. 
And that's, that's an important point. If we just listen to what he just said, that's very important. Mm -hmm. The councilwoman who is the chair of the zoning doesn't have a telephone number to pick up and say, what? I want somebody over there oh, yeah. today. Yeah, I, want, yeah. I got somebody working on the house right now who has a, a lifting Green device one. that, 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 that is lifting physical <laughs> materials inside of the property, and we can't do nothing about it because there's some paperwork error or something like that. This is a today issue. This is a tomorrow issue when you get back to the office to say, look, we got something on the corner over here. Right. And so